Welcome to Beery Theory. Let's talk about hangovers. Welcome to Beery Theory. This is our brand new series all about the science behind beer, delivered in a way that's as easy to digest as a crisp IPA. So let's get started with the worst thing about drinking beer, or drinking anything. Hangovers. Everyone's probably had one at least once in their lives, from the person that gets a headache after a half pint to the person that never really gets hungover. Actually, that's kind of me. Oh no, I definitely do. Oh, God. So hungover! Thank you. Thanks for showing that. Thank you. We all know the feeling. You've had an amazing night out and you fall asleep just like that. And you wake up and my God, is everything gone wrong with your body. Headaches, dry mouth, drowsiness, fatigue, overexcitement, stomach ache, nausea, you're sweaty, you're hungry, you're not hungry, you eat loads, you feel worse, you feel better, you feel even worse. What the hell is going on here? And how can we stop it if we can? So, in your brain, you've got the pituitary gland. This is where all your hormones are born. One of these hormones is ADH, antidiuretic hormone. This hormone is carried to the kidney by the blood. Imagine the kidney as a place where there is a person going, oh, the body needs more water, or oh, the body doesn't need any more water. Oh, the kidney obviously does a lot more and it's quite a lot more complicated than that, but for the meantime, that's all you need to know. When you're dehydrated, the brain tells the kidney via the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, to absorb more of the water that's currently in the system. When you drink alcohol, however, this restricts the release of ADH by the pituitary gland and leaving the kidney with no idea what's going on. Since the kidney has no idea what to do with regards to the reabsorption of water, it just sort of lets it all go. Which is why, when you drink booze, you're always on the toilet. Same with coffee. So, when you're drunk, your kidneys are drunk. But what else is going on? Everything you put in your body are broken down into nutrients in the bloodstream and they're taken to the liver so that the body can figure out what's what. The enzymes to the liver sort out the nutrients from the toxins and release the toxins and absorb the nutrients. Alcohol is taken to the liver where it's broken down into acetylaldehyde, nailed it, by one enzyme and then broken down again to acetate with a little help of something called Glutathione, a compound that's found in relatively small numbers in the liver. So just to recap, the alcohol goes to the liver, is broken down to acetylaldehyde by one enzyme, and then to acetate by another enzyme and glutathione. So the more alcohol you absorb in your body, the less glutathione your liver has to deal with it, leaving a lot of acetylaldehyde around your body. I mean, this stuff is between 10 and 30 times more toxic than alcohol and can cause sickness and nausea, and headaches and general shittiness. Boom, you're hungover. Okay, it's the morning after, your body is riddled with acetylaldehyde and you feel disgusting. So what can we do to help it? There are plenty of remedies out there and in a future Beery Theory, we're gonna be exploring some of the more unusual ones, which means I'm gonna have to get a vicious hangover. Yeah. But there are a few ways that have been scientifically proven to help you get through it. Let's go through them now. Before you drink, eat fatty foods. Basically anything that looks like a sponge will slow down the absorption of alcohol into the body. Water should be drunk at every point during your session, from when you sit down to enjoy your tasty pre-drinking sponge to your bedside pint. Everyone does that, right? Bedside pint, yeah? With a body full of water, this can help out your confuzzled kidney that's just chucking all the water out of you. A few more rules, try to avoid dark stuff like red wine, brandy or whiskey as this contains another toxin which just puts more pressure on your liver to try and get all this crud out of you. Beer doesn't count as a dark liquid in this sense, but it doesn't help when it's really carbonated as this speeds up the absorption of alcohol, especially when you go from something carbonated to something pretty strong. Which gives rise to the rhyme, which is actually true. Beer before liquor. Something about being sick. I, I don't know, we didn't say liquor in England. Before bed, if you're gonna take anything, have an aspirin. And when you get up, have eggs, banana, and fruit juice. In a pint glass. No, not, not in a pint glass. I, for one, kind of enjoy hangovers. Unless they're vomitingly, disgustingly inhibitive, they're quite funny to watch other people have, and oh god, I'm just a bastard. Oh. That's all to talk about hangovers, really. They suck. 
Big time! Thanks for watching this first ever Beery Theory, which is bringing you the science behind compliance. What? Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash pint size thinking for giveaways, exclusive episodes, and news and rants and stuff. And if you want to know more about hangovers and the biology and science behind them, check out ASAP Science. There's a link in the description below, and you can check them out just up there. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.